You're worthy of all praise And my heart will sing How great is our God Good morning, church. Could you sing it with us? Say. You're the name
you just lift your hands to heaven? We do this as a physical sign of surrender unto God. Father, we just don't worship you with our words. We worship you with a lifestyle. Let's posture to heaven. Thank you for the victory over death. And we declare, alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope and no place to be. You know it's here. Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested in my life began. Sing Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphaned heart was given my morning grew quiet my feet rose to dance when death was arrested and my life began oh your grace so free washes all Chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. He canceled my death and he called me his friend. When death was arrested, my life began. Oh, your grace, so. On a criminal's cross Darkness rejoiced As though heaven had lost
Hallelujah. I love those words. Then Jesus arose with freedom in hand, folks. <laughs> Death was arrested. Folks, we have the victory in Christ today. And if you don't know that freedom, if you don't know that victory, it can be yours today if you will place your faith in Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day, this resurrection Easter day that we can celebrate, Lord, the finished work of Christ on the cross, the culmination of all things, your salvation, which has been made available to man. Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you said it is finished. The powers of hell and sin have been broken. God, shame and guilt no longer can hold us when we have placed our lives in your hands. We thank you that greater is the Christ who comes to live in us than anything in this world. And so, Father, today, we celebrate the victory of our risen Savior. And Lord, we thank you for loving us, for loving us and for choosing us as your own. Today we give you the highest praise for you are on the throne and you reign supreme. There is no one like you. You are holy, set apart from all things. All the gods of the nations are idols, but you made the heavens and the earth. And God, we thank you that you have this whole world in your hand. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Give him a shout of praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Before you're seated, I want you to turn to three people. Tell somebody he is alive. Those of you who've joined us online, he is alive. The Lord bless you. So delighted to have you joining us from all over the world today. Praise God. Amen. Somebody say glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Folks, sometimes you got to let it out. If you've got that shout in you, you got to let it out. Because if you don't, it's gonna, you're going to hurt yourself. <laughs> you've got to let that shout out. Amen. We're going to continue our worship today as we prepare to give of our tithes and offering. And again, we want to say thank you for your incredible generosity. Today, you're going to hear about how your giving is impacting the nation of Honduras. But before that, we want to remind you that TSC Kids is available on the third floor of our annex. So if you have a, a child uh, beneath the ages of fifth grade and younger, you can take your child to uh, any of the exits in the back or ushers can direct you to our wonderful safe facilities and you can come back and enjoy our presentation today. Our presentation is entitled Through Her Eyes and it's a collection of film, testimonies, songs, and then a wonderful message from our pastor, Pastor Tim Delina, uh, to follow and it's gonna be a wonderful time. So I wanna encourage you to open up your hearts today and let the message of Easter touch you in a special way. Amen. Let's go ahead and watch this video that's coming up next and then right after our presentation will begin. God bless you. Times Square Church, my name is Jorge, and I'm a member of the TSC Deaf Community Team. Last year, we shared with you how we helped our partners in Honduras purchase land to construct a building for their school for deaf children. 
I had the opportunity to visit these partners on a mission trip to Honduras in 2012. Parents and volunteers came alongside the teachers with Pastor Marcos and his wife, Sarah, who is the school director to build this brand new facility. But God had a bigger plan for them to speed up the process as two other organizations joined us in supporting the building of the school. In Times Square Church, here's some exciting news. The school is ready. The building has been inaugurated and the kids are enjoying a beautiful, brand new school that they describe as a miracle that only God could do because this is the only school for deaf children in the whole country. Here is Pastor Marcos and Sarah thanking all of you for your faithful support. Gracias Times Square Church por su valioso apoyo. Que Dios bendiga cada uno de los donantes que han aportado para poder ver este sueño hecho realidad. Thank you so much, God bless you. Times Square Church for all your support. Your giving every week is making a tangible difference across the globe. Thank you for partnering so generously with us, both financially and through prayer, to help equip missionaries, ministries, and organizations worldwide so that they can continue to share the life-changing message of Jesus. Times Square Church, you make this possible, and we are so grateful. If you're prepared to give today, I want to remind you that there are five ways you can give here at TSC. You can text give TSC NYC to 77977. You can download the PushPay app and give that way. You can give online at tsc.nyc slash give. And the easiest way to give is by setting up a recurring gift on our website like we're showing you right now. We've made it simple to give automatically from your credit card, debit card, or checking account. Life gets busy, and this is a great way to put God first in your finances. It takes less than two minutes to set up a recurring gift, and we've made it simple and convenient for you to give online through our secure platform. Or you can always mail your check or money order to our office. And if you're with us in person today, you can give by putting your tithes and offerings in the baskets that our ushers are passing out in a few moments. Thanks again for being such a generous church. Maybe you've heard this story before. Maybe this is your first time. Imagine you're in Israel some 2,000 years ago. A man named Jesus, divine son of God, disease healing, demon fighting, dead raising Jesus. A friend of your family, God himself a guest in your home. Your own eyes a witness to his wonder working miraculous power. And then all of a sudden he's gone arrested on false charges, sentenced to death, executed in the most brutal way imaginable. Cynicism eating at your certainty like moths on a buried body, death and grief too familiar a face to your story. Was he who he said he was? Emmanuel or imposter? Your mind racing, soul aching, but there's no time to grieve. Pressure so immense, a household to manage with what seems like the world's weight on your back wishing you could rewind time if only you had surrendered your stress to rest, seated at his feet. This is what Martha faced, and a little bit of hers and all of us. Maybe you've been in church all your life, never missed a Sunday. You're tired, burned out, on empty, caught in constant competition with your own inner critic to prove your worth again and again. Striving, struggling, pushing for perfection to earn God's favor. This is for you. Maybe you think you've messed up one too many times, made too many mistakes, burned through second, third, and fourth chances, racked with regret, wondering why you couldn't have done the right thing. You think it's too late and labeled yourself a lost cause. This is for you. This is Martha's story. Let's experience this Easter through her eyes.
Martha. God is my refuge and my strength. A very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, I will not fear, though the earth shakes and the mountains slip into the heart of the sea. Will you forget me forever? <laughs> Mary? Can you help me? Mary? Please tell my sister to help me. She listens to you. Martha. Martha. Rest. Like your sister, free from worry. I won't take that from her, Martha. Martha. Two of my men from Amethea. How can this be? Am I too late?
Send for Jesus. It's Lazarus. He's dying. Love is this the Son of God who leaves us to suffer? Four days. It's been four days. If you had been here, even still, God listens to you. Your brother will rise again. I know. At the end of time, he will be resurrected. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will live, even if they die. Do you believe in me? Lazarus, come out. brought life back to my brother. Could you not have saved yourself? To have sat at your feet.
understand our pain. You're well acquainted with our pain. Son of suffering, son of suffering. Oh God, oh Lord. Your cross, my freedom. Your stripes, my healing. All praise, King Jesus. Glory to God in heaven. Your blood still speaking. Your love still reaching. Oh, praise, King Jesus. Glory to Sing God. Sing it with the saints. Your cross, my freedom. Your stripes, my healing. Oh, praise, King Jesus. Glory to God. you feel so far? Give me your bag. 
I don't understand. You must bear it no more. Martha. Martha. It's him. He's alive. Are they sure? Are they sure it was him? He said he appeared in a locked room. Nail scars on his hands. You've never gone too far that God can't redeem you, restore you, forgive you, and give you a second chance.
yes you are, yes you are. Listen, cause rain came and wind blew, but my house is built on you, and I'm safe with you. going to an Orthodox church and being from an immigrant family, I was taught to get educated, have a career, marry the right man, start a family and live a comfortable life with wealth and success. This plan of mine started coming together when I met the man of my dreams at the age of 17. But after being in a very controlling relationship for seven years, everything came crashing down. Everything that I worked so hard to gain. I reached the lowest point of my life, heartbroken, depressed, filled with despair, guilt, and shame. I didn't know where to turn. I found myself coming here every Tuesday for the midweek service, and I sat up there. 
At first, I didn't understand everything that was happening here, but something was different, something so peaceful about it. So I kept coming, and every time I came, I cried from the very beginning to the end. And then one day, the choir sang a song that I had heard before, but on that day, it hit home, like really hit home, like in my heart. The song talked about a king that loved me so much that he gave his life for me. It talked about his amazing love and that in that love, I was forgiven and I was accepted. For the first time in my life, I knew that I knew this was the truth. This king was Jesus Christ. And I decided that day that I would surrender my life and follow him and let him write the story that he had for me. Since that day, I can tell you that this life that I've been living is far greater than anything I've ever imagined. And this love that I have, far deeper than anything I've ever known. My name is Amy. Jesus took my burdens and he gave me another chance. Summer and winter and springtime and a harvest. Sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join in all nature in manifold witness. I grew up in a dysfunctional home. I turned to drugs and music for comfort. I began taking psychedelic drugs at the age of about 14. I would go to festivals and concerts, and while I was there, I would really mock the name of Jesus. At age 22, I had a breakdown. I was arrested, I was hospitalized. While I was in the hospital, I heard a small, still voice say, if I heal you, will you serve me? I left the hospital, I was a different person. I didn't do drugs, I didn't curse, I didn't smoke anymore. I visited a few churches and someone told me about Times Square Church. I began attending Times Square Church and the first two years were great. I had joy, I had peace. But then I started striving to please God by works while most of the time I was feeling condemned and living under shame. After a really bad drug trip, I went back to my old ways of living. And then a year later, I came back to Jesus and I came into his arms again. But six months later, I began hallucinating and hearing voices. I was taken to the doctors where I was diagnosed paranoid schizophrenic and placed on four different antipsychotic medicines. The next 15 years of my life were a living hell. I was taken by ambulance five times because of very violent behavior and handcuffs, and I was hospitalized over 20 times. But 10 years ago, God kept his promise to me and healed me and took me off all medication. I am now married to a Christian woman. I have my own construction business. And most importantly, I'm living under the blood covenant of Jesus without any more condemnation. My name is Daniel, and Jesus took my burdens away. He gives a pardon for sin and the peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for all of our tomorrows 
Blessings are mine We're ten thousand I lived my life in sin and I loved it. I thought of God and church as some stupid fairy tales that people believe in because they're afraid of death. I lived my life in hatred and fear and I blamed God for it throughout my whole life. At the age of 14, during freshman year of high school, I fell into a deep depression. My parents saw a lot of changes in my attitude, so they brought me to a doctor. That doctor prescribed me to a mental health therapist. Unfortunately, throughout the years, my depression got worse, worse, and worse. There was a spiritual battle happening that I did not know of. June 7th, 2020 was the day where I gave up. I had enough. Sitting on my bed, I was in my thoughts, and I found a cure to my depression. It was a solution. It was suicide. I was going to take my bike, ride it to the Verrazano Bridge, and from there I would jump off. I would be set free from my pain and suffering, is what I thought. As I stood up, I said to myself, that's what I'm going to do. I opened my door, and as I was opening my door and walking out, my whole body froze. It froze, and all I can feel and hear is this presence, this voice that was not mine. It said to pray. I didn't know how to pray. I hated God after all. Why would I pray to him? But I immediately submitted to that thought. Then I locked my door. I went on my knees and I cried out to the Lord saying, God, take the pain away. God, take the pain away. All I felt was this peace I cannot describe. I was in the presence of God and my tears, no longer tears of pain, but tears of joy. That following month, I bought a Bible and I became a born again believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm 16 years old now, and my life has never been better. But church, my testimony doesn't end there, or shall I say, my mother's testimony. You see, for three years, three years, I've been praying that my family may be saved. And a few weeks ago, my mother gave her life to Christ. <sighs> you would think that the testimony ends there. You would think that God would stop there, or he would stop moving. No. Two days ago, this Good Friday, as Pastor Tim was giving out the ABCs to be born again, I saw my father and my brother raise their hand to be born again. My name is Jerome. Jesus took my burdens and gave me another chance. Jesus. Jesus. 2 Timothy says that even though we're faithless, God continues to remain faithful. Has he been faithful to you? If he has, why don't you stand to your feet and sing this sing? Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness.
As you remain standing, could you give one more hand clap for this amazing production? Here's the good news. They are not done. We're gonna get ready for a finale here in just a few moments. And so the story of Martha's restoration at the resurrection of Jesus Christ, what a powerful story. And in just a few moments, you're gonna get a chance to rejoice with all those here on this stage. And it's gonna be one of a powerful moment here in just a few moments. But I do wanna do this. Not only do I wanna welcome all of you that are here with us, online, but just so, I mean, in person, but just so you know, you're not the only ones here at 51st and Broadway, that you have people joining with you all over the world. Can I read some of the countries that are with us right now live? Let me just share with you. The UK, the Netherlands, Georgia, Norway, Italy, Germany, France, Spain, Ireland, Costa Rica is with us, Guatemala, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico is with us, Bahamas, Jamaica, St. Vincent, the Philippines, Indonesia, China, Russia, Kenya, and Eswatini. Can we just give a hand clap to welcome all those? We're so thankful that you're with us. Can I also tell you something that just brings joy to my heart? Just before we pray, one of the things that brings joy to my heart that you have invested in, not only that amazing school of the deaf in Honduras, but some of the things that you've invested in today, we launch our second YouTube channel. We have, YouTube, we have TSC Chinese begins to launch today. And so I, we do, I don't, we usually we have, uh, we have the graphic on the screen. I don't think we have it today. Um, you will have that opportunity just to know, there it is. Look at that, folks. Can you give a hand clap for that? <laughs> TSC Chinese has been launched. Um, that is me speaking in Chinese, just so you know. Um, TSC Espanol, TSC Chinese, and in the next two months, TSC Arabic will be, will be launching. And then the biggest one that we have our challenge with that we're asking God to help us with is TSC India will be then, uh, will be launched in the next four months. And so we are so excited that God is touching the world. So what great testimonies. In these next few moments, I want you to be able to say, not only with Martha, not only with Amy and Jerome and Daniel, I want you to be able to say today, whether you're watching from Norway or the UK, whether it's Belgium, France, Puerto Rico, Kenya, I want you to be able to say these words, Jesus took my burdens and gave me a second chance. And I wanna believe for him to do that. Let's pray together. Father, I'm just gonna to believe today that in these next few moments that the Holy Spirit is going to speak. We're gonna rejoice at the end as we begin the finale of Through Her Eyes. But in these next few moments, I pray that God let your word begin to go deep inside the hearts. Whether they're sitting here at 51st and Broadway, whether they're watching around New York City, around the country, or around the world, I am believing that your Holy Spirit is not limited by a location. They don't have to be in a church building, in a seat in New York City. They could be watching on a couch, in a subway, at an airport, some of them in certain countries I know need to watch in a closet away from even public eye because it is illegal for this to even be happening in their country. But God, we believe today it is going to be a day of freedom and liberty in this house and around the world. And we pray this in Jesus' name and everybody said amen and amen. Put your hands together one more time and then you may be seated. The five senses of touch, smell, hearing, and taste assess the present situations for all of us, but they also do something that's amazing. They connect us to the past. In fact, they say, doctors say, that the five senses can activate the memory, the past, in, in such a unique way that whether you see, hear, smell, they said it brings back stories from the past. I kept thinking through that, and that very same thing happened to me. When the pandemic or the isolation was beginning to lessen here in New York City, I remember walking through the streets and going by a park, and I saw a young man bouncing a pink ball. And my, my inner New York, where I grew up here on, in New York City, began to just bring all these stories back because I saw myself. For anybody who grew up in New York, whenever you saw 
a pink ball bouncing, you also knew that there was a broomstick that would go along with it, and it was called stick ball. And you would go to supermarkets. I remember the stories just kept coming. I was thinking about going behind the AMPs and the food fairs and chalking in a, a white strike zone as friends would begin to play with that spalding rubber ball and a broomstick, and we called it stick ball. The, then, then not too long ago, I was walking through a, a store and heard the mood music playing, and all of a sudden, the, the, the ears... The listening started to activate memories of my past. I remember all the way back when I was 11 years old, 12 years old on Long Island, I remember riding my bicycle because they were playing a song of an album. Now, some of you may not know what a record is today, um, so let me help you. What, uh, how many remember what 33s were? Anybody remember 33s? Okay, this is a very young crowd because there's, there's, there's only a few old people. How many remember what a 45 is? Anybody remember what a 45 is? It's not a gun. It's a law. It's a oversized CD is what it is. Um, and they were playing this song, these songs that I bought my first album ever at a department store in Hempstead, New York called Corvettes. And right there, I spent $11 and bought that music. And I remember vividly driving my bike to, right to Corvettes, right next to it. This is a blast from the past. was Woolworth right next to it as I was buying my first $11 double album. But the one that, that literally became emotional for me was standing in a grocery store line not too long ago. And the older woman in front of me had, was wearing a perfume and it was the very perfume that my mom wears. And it brought back these amazing memories of my mom because that was, that was her perfume. My mom, who's still alive, that I'm going to get ready to go see in the next month, is 101 years old. 101. They just took her license away at 95. I'm telling you, that woman drove and wore red pumps till she was 95 years old. And I'm telling you, she has a memory. I mean, she is amazing. The only thing that she faces right now is she can't hear. And I remember calling her up on this last uh, Mother's Day. And as I was calling, I was screaming on the phone. It's your son. And happy mother. And she, she just goes, who is this? It's your son. And she didn't know who I was, not because she didn't remember. She just couldn't hear me. And finally, at one point, she goes, she just interrupted. She goes, I don't know who this is, but thank you for calling and hung up on me at that point. I looked at Cindy and I said, that counts. That counts. I call my mother on Mother's Day. But they say this, when I smelt that perfume, they say that the sense of smell gives the most vivid recollection of all the five senses. Smell gives the most vivid recollection of, of past and calls up stories more than any other. Saturday, there was a doctor here um, that came and talked to me after service and said, you're exactly right. He said, odor and smell stimulate the brain like none, none of the other five senses and remind you of the stories. When I was in high school, a young man named Richard Churchill was one of my best friends. We went to pick up his parents at the airport. And as we were going to pick up his parents, they were coming in from vacation. He, they worked for the airlines. And as we drove them back, we got to their gated community and to their house where they lived in. And we couldn't believe what we saw, or we didn't know it immediately. There was, a, there was this gleam in the sky. And little did we know that there were fire trucks and that the gleam was flame. Their house was on fire. We pulled up to Richard's house and with his two parents that came off vacation and saw their house burning. And the firemen, the brave firemen, put the fire out, but the outside was absolutely destroyed. But the inside, there were still some things that were salvageable. When we walked in, I remember walking in with Richard, my friend, the senior in high school, and we had the opportunity to walk into his room. And though the room was completely black, covered with, covered with all the ashes, I remember walking in, and, he's, and he was just in absolute disbelief. As he's looking at his closet, all the clothes are covered. The room is black. The walls are black. His guitars, because he was a musician, were all covered with soot. And I, re I would remember that he would come to church or we'd see him at school or he'd be riding in a car together. And that smell was always there from the smoke damage that, was, that came 
from that night and from that fire. And what's amazing is every time I smell that, and it seems to not be unique to one house or one place, that whether you're in Dallas or whether you're in Minneapolis, whether you're in Los Angeles or whether you're in Amsterdam, whether you're in New York City or whether you're from Miami, when that smell comes of a house, a building burning down, it seems to be the same smell every single time. And when I smell it, even at my age now, I remember that night. I remember because that odor brings back those stories that you went through. But listen, there are happy smells and happy odors too. Because as the weather is breaking here in New York, it was hard to imagine that we woke up this morning to 32 degree weather. But what's crazy is, is next week it's going to be in the 80s. Go figure out what's going on. But here's what's crazy. Whenever you start to see the weather break, you know summer is near. And when that begins to happen, one of the smells that I love is waking up on a Saturday morning and you go outside and you smell barbecues that's happening. There's something about that that tells you it's the holiday weekend because somebody's cooking something. And here's what's crazy. As you sit in a room like this with not only all different places of the world represented, but really there's ages that are represented here. All of those above 50 years old seem to be on the charcoal side. We buy charcoal and we buy Kingsford and we squirt the fluid on that. We wait for those coals to heat up. But then there's the next gen side, which is called propane, that all you have to do is click it and it starts. There's no labor involved at all with that. The debate goes on, propane, charcoal, which one do you use? Well, you know what's crazy is that the Bible has something to say about this. Some of you are wondering, what Bible do you use at this church? So give me a moment. Peter, one of the disciples of Jesus, would have been a propane man. Pastor Tim, how can you, how can you even say that? Stay with me, because the smell of char charcoal to Peter didn't conjure up holiday weekends. It didn't conjure up for him good memories. That's why Peter would have been a propane man, but not for the reasons that you're thinking. Let me show you in the scripture. Because it was Peter on the night just before Jesus was going to be taken to trial and hung on a cross. It was Peter that made this promise and said, though everybody forsake you, I will never forsake you. Though everybody else deny that they even knew you, he told Jesus, I would never deny. And Jesus looked at him and said, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. Here is what happened shortly after Peter made this promise. Let me read it to you. It's in John chapter 18. The Bible says Simon Peter was following Jesus. This is while Jesus was going to his trial. And so was another disciple. That was John. You're going to see those two show up in a few moments. Now that disciple was known to the high priest and entered with Jesus into the court of the high priest. But Peter was standing at the door outside. So that the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to the doorkeeper and brought Peter in. Now watch. Then the slave girl who kept the door said to Peter, you are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? And Peter said, I am not denial number one. Now the slaves and the officers were standing there having made a, what does it say? Oh, that's why he'd be a propane man. For it was cold and they were warming themselves. And Peter was also warming himself. It was at that fire, if you read on in John 18, three times over a charcoal fire, Peter said three times, I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. While charcoal makes you think of a holiday weekend, for Peter it made him think of the worst day of his life. Because it reminded him of one thing. The odor of charcoal had to remind him of one thing, and that is betrayal. But here's the good news today. This is a day of rejoicing. It's a day of celebration. It's the day, as you heard, of Jesus taking burdens and giving people second chances. So let me tell you that if Peter was the fourth person to walk out here tonight, let me just give you a little bit of Peter's story. If he was standing here dressed in black, with his notebook and reading his story, I want to tell you a little bit what Peter would have told you. See, Jesus is resurrected. Jesus is alive. Peter is freshly off his, his denial tour, and he's about to encounter the resurrected Jesus. And it's going to be on the beach at the Sea of Galilee. 
Think about this for a moment. Peter is fishing and Jesus is on the beach. And John, who is in the boat, just like he was with Peter in the high court of, of the priest, notices Jesus is on the beach. Let me read it to you. It says this in John 21. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved, that's John, said to Peter, it is the Lord. So when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put his outer garment on, for he was stripped for work, threw himself into the sea. And look what it says. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land. Now here's what's crazy. They were 100 yards away, dragging the net full of fish. Did you just see what Peter did? Peter swam 100 yards to get to Jesus. Okay, let me give you just a little bit of a dad moment. Um, last Saturday, Cindy and I um, flew to Columbus, Ohio, to Ohio State University. It was there that they were gathering for the national championships um, of the swimming national championships of colleges all over the United States. 130 universities joined together at Ohio State University at the, at where the Buckeyes play, known for football, but they were hosting the swim, the swim nationals for all the universities. There was Stanford, there was Notre Dame, University of Georgia, Florida State, Purdue, everybody was there, Michigan State, everybody was there, and my son swims for Liberty University, he's their, he's their breaststroker. So Christian, my son, swims the 200, the 100, and the 50, but it's the 100 that is his event, that's what he swims. The 100 is literally 100 yards. It's, that pool is 25 across and 25 back, and you have to swim it four times in order to come. So what Peter was actually doing was swimming four laps just to get to Jesus. Now, if I could just give you this one side note for just a moment. Um, out of 130 universities, Liberty University came in second that day. And so I, we were celebrating, um, but Purdue University. Oh. Okay, let me let go of that right now. It's a day of second chances. Let me just say this. Peter is swimming 100 yards. Peter's excited. Jesus is alive. And he's on the beach 100 yards away. And here's what's crazy. He's cooking breakfast. This is what's amazing. But remember, Peter is smoke damaged. He's smoke damaged. Keep this in mind. After Peter swims four laps, he dries off in the sand. He's getting ready to come to meet Jesus on the beach, the resurrected Jesus. And then it hits him in the face. The memory stimulates as he recognizes, what is that smell? Here it is. So when they, they get out up to land, they see a what? Oh, Jesus, why couldn't you do propane? Think of this for a moment. He's cooking breakfast. He's Jesus. He should know better. Charcoal fire laid the fish placed on it and the bread. This is amazing. I could just see Peter going, charcoal, no. So Jesus is there cooking a fire, waiting for them. The last thing that Peter ever wanted to smell again was charcoal. That, that's the stimulant. That's the thing that brought back the story. It was over charcoal that he would have three denials and say, I never knew him. Where charcoal was not Easter to Peter. It was failure to him. Think of this for a moment. Folks, he shows up, think of the senses. His eyes see Je sees Jesus in front of him. His, his ears hears him talking. But what trumps all of that is his nose, the recognition of charcoal going, he's resurrected, he's speaking, he's talking to me. But oh my goodness, I've denied him three times. Here's what's amazing. You know the hard part of meeting Jesus with some of the issues that we have in our lives is that we are damaged goods and we think to ourselves, why would he even want me? Why would he even love me for what I've done, for what I've said? Why would he even talk to me? Let alone, Peter's probably going, why would he even be cooking breakfast for me? Remember the testimonies 
that you've heard this afternoon? What about Amy, whose human expectations are placed upon her like a weight, and she realizes that when she tries to do what people expected of her, she hits a dead end until God shows up and says, you don't have to carry that weight anymore. Let me take that burden. How about Daniel believing in the lies of his mind? This mental fight to hurt and harm people put in a hospital over 20 times and kept there so he wouldn't hurt and not only himself but anybody else. And how about Jerome getting ready to drive a bike to the Veranzano Bridge to commit suicide? And, and God finds a rescue plan for every single one of these people. Think about this for a moment. Here's what's crazy. These are broken people with scars on them, maybe physically, maybe just internally. People that can actually say, I'm messed up. But here's what I want you to hear today. Worse, worse than, than anything else is believing this lie, is that I thought I can only come to Jesus when I get better then I would come to him. Folks, let me just dispel something for you today. That wouldn't be good news if this, and he makes you good. That's the gospel message. That's what happens. That's what, that's what goes on. You can have smoke damage today. There could be things that you're thinking to yourself, I'm scarred, I'm hurt on the inside. And God goes, you, that's the person I want to come to me today. You can even have scars on your body whether it's from cutting or even an abortion that you felt like, what did I do? How could I ever do something like that? And you that are sitting here today are candidates for meeting with Jesus today. You are a candidate for him taking burdens and giving another chance. Think about that just for a moment. I kept, as I was watching this, there's this thought that hit me because people kept asking, and it even happened today, they were asking about, the movie. They said, where did you get those clips from? Can we watch it? Where do, on Amazon do we buy it? Well, you can't because we wrote it, produced it, filmed it, did the cinematography, all the team, the creative team did all of that, did an amazing job with that. And what I love that they did is that when Mary, I'm sorry, when Martha was coming in that final clip and Jesus's hands go on, did you notice the nail marks, the scars on Jesus' hands. This is the thought that went through my mind. Listen to this. When God raised Jesus from the dead, why didn't he fix the scars? Like, you just raised him up. You just took a dead body and raised him up. What? You couldn't fix the scars? You couldn't do a little surgery and, and, and clean it up a little bit? Why leave the scars? Why the print, the nail prints? on his hands and on his feet. Why did you have to see that on the resurrected Jesus? Can I, just, can I just give you my own thoughts on this? Can it be that the resurrection is saying to us that you can live a victorious life even with the greatest wounds that are still on you today? That you may have the marks of your past, but when the resurrected Jesus touches you, you can go into the future regardless of what is on your body. Here's the good news. Get ready for this. That the resurrection of Jesus means that the worst thing is never the last thing. That's the gospel story. Tell me your worst story, and I've got to tell you about a resurrected Jesus that can take your worst thing and say it'll never be your last thing. That's what makes it amazing. That's why somehow we have to understand that the resurrected Christ is the forever wounded Christ. That he is living, but he, yet he is marked in heaven with the, with the wickedness of men's hands that still lives on his body. He will reign as king forever, but yet he is scarred for eternity to remind us that if you're sitting here today scarred, I'm telling you, you can still live a victorious life. That's why I love my Favorite thing on Sundays, if you ever see me struggling on anything, I find myself moving this way to my favorite section of the church. It's this section over here. This is the people that I love. I pray for them every Saturday. I come in here and pray for their seats. It's our deaf ministry. It's our deaf section. And that's why when I saw the, 
Honduras school that you helped build, it not only brought joy to me, but I pray all the time that God would just grow this ministry, heal them, and then send more. That's what I would pray for. So here's, here's what's amazing, is that I don't know sign lang lang language, but I do know one word in sign language, because it's the word that we use all the time. We sing the word all the time. We preach the word all the time, and it's the name Jesus. Do you know what the name Jesus is in sign? I'm going to keep saying Jesus, so you're looking over what she's doing. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Do you know what, you know what the name, name Jesus is? It means you touch the scars where the scars were. Isn't it amazing that I would think if you're talking about Jesus, it would be something like Jesus or, you know, a throne with the, with the scepter or like, hey, Jesus. No, 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 no. It brings you all the way back to the scars that says that's what liberated us. That's what set us free. That's where liberty is for us today. It's found in Jesus is where it's found. Those precious scars that Jesus talks about for us, that those scars that brought our own healing. But Jesus, why the charcoal? Come on. Can't you just be a little merciful, Jesus? Was Jesus rubbing it in? Was, Pete, was, was Jesus going, hey, remember this smell, Peter? Remember this? What does this make you think about? What it makes me think about is that I'm always right. That's what it makes me think about. I, I don't think that was it. I don't think he was doing that at all. I don't think he set up a charcoal fire there at all to remind Peter about his past. You know what I think is the reason why most of us don't understand it, or I didn't even understand it as I kept thinking about it, is because I don't understand breakfast. Some of you go, no, I understand breakfast. We got some of you healthy ones in the balcony. I just do egg whites. That's all you do. And then we have a whole section over here that just goes pancakes, waffles, put on butter, and put on syrup. Um, I hate to tell you what side I'm on, so we'll just leave that alone. But here's what's amazing. We don't understand breakfast, so therefore we don't understand charcoal. Pastor, what do, what do you mean by this? Here it is. Jesus said to him, bring some of the fish which you've now caught. Simon Peter went up, drew the net to land full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was torn. And here it comes. And Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Come and have breakfast. Folks, let me tell you what those words meant. Because come and have breakfast were second chance words. It was let me take the burden. Come and have breakfast was Jesus giving him another chance. Because in the Middle East, this is what we forget. When we think of breakfast, we think of a diner. We think of a restaurant here in New York or whether you cook it yourself. But in the Middle East, here it comes. You never ate with enemies. You only ate with your friends. And when he was saying, come have breakfast, he said, Peter, we are friends. Despite the scars, despite the failures, the denials, when he said, let's have breakfast, I have to believe those were the, the all the words that Jesus said, I have to believe that those were the words that Peter latched onto and said, these words are for me. To have breakfast and you are my friend, this is amazing that you would invite me as a friend to share a meal with you. What kind of God is this that would take me at my worst point? I'm smelling, I'm seeing all that, that's happening and all that's taken place. See, what's happening is what happened to Peter. It was an invitation. See, we're told in the book of Revelation that anyone who wants to have a relationship with God, it starts with a knock. It starts, Jesus, Jesus even said these words. It starts with a knock. That a knock comes on the door of a heart that's sitting here today. Maybe you heard, felt that knock as a song was being sung or as a story was being told or as something you watched on the screen and all of a sudden you felt that knock. That Jesus is going, come, come on. Come on, this is gonna be an opportunity. I'm not angry, I wanna be friends. And we're thinking it's Jesus coming going like, hey, Remember what you did? Remember how you used my name in vain? Remember you cursed my name? Think about even what, what Daniel and Jerome said. said we, we mocked God. We'd make fun of And yet Jesus still knocks on the door for them. 
Listen, listen, this is what makes this so amazing. If I could tell you this, is while all other religions are you wanting God, Christianity is God wanting you. That's the difference. While every other religion is, huh, I want to find God. I want to do whatever I can to be in your grave. And God, God goes, no, 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 no. That's not the, what the true God does. The true God says, I'm going to find you. And I'm going to find you and knock on your heart. Here's what Revelation says, what that knock is for. He says, I stand at the door and knock. And if you hear my voice and open the door, he says, I'm going to come in. And we will what? As, wow, that's what he would do? That he would take Peter in his worst position? Think about this. Folks, this is incredible because Jesus doesn't just knock in a church building. Jesus knocks in a psych ward and Daniel responds. Jesus knocks on the bedroom of a 16-year-old young man that's contemplating suicide. But yet he can knock in this building here like he did for Amy in the balcony when Amy was here and reached the dead end of her life but felt a knock that was coming on. Peter gets a knock on a beach in Galilee. And whether you're watching in Eswatini or whether you're watching in Belize or whether you're watching in Germany or you're in the Netherlands, he can knock. He doesn't, not limit it to 51st and Broadway. Jesus is knocking on hearts all over the world and he's doing that right now. You smell charcoal, Peter, and you think of failure. But Jesus says this is a new day because the next time you smell charcoal, you're not gonna remember denial. You're going to remember that was, that's what he said. Here's what's crazy. They say that there's three ways to get rid of smoke damage, to get rid of that smell. They said, first of all, if you have homeowner's insurance, you can get the ozone generator. You couldn't afford it unless you had insurance. And they said the ozone generator, they go through professionally and clean it. But then there's the old home remedy. They said if you take water and white vinegar and scrub things with baking soda, you can get that smell out. But folks, it's the third way that blew my mind. And I had to look it up to go, this can't be true. They said you can get it out with ozone generator. You can get it out with white vinegar and water and, and things with baking soda. You ready for this? The third way to get rid of smoke damage, here it comes, is with charcoal. You can set charcoal all over. Oh, I'm going, God, that doesn't even. And Jesus chooses way number three to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix the smoke damage in your life, Peter. That every time you think about it, someone is cooking a barbecue weekend in Jerusalem, you're not going to think of denial. You're going to think of a brand new friendship between, the, the, between us. You, it's the day, it's not the day you denied me. It's the day we had breakfast together. It's the day that I've accepted you. In all, all that has happened, Peter, you didn't have to get good and show up. You didn't have to go, now I'm really doing well, so let's have breakfast together. That's not what Jesus did. My mind goes back for some of us that know our story. Cindy and I were in Detroit, Michigan for some 30 years, pastored a church. If you don't know the story here, um, we pastored a church for 20 years, we bought a triple X movie theater in a city called Highland Park, the center of Detroit. They ran the pornographic movies till the day we bought it and gave. Now, here's what's crazy. If you don't believe me, I've got a group of ladies on this. I, did, I forgot they're all from our church in Detroit that were all there. So if you ever think that that's, that was in the church, ask those four. And if I'm telling the truth, raise your hand because they all came out of that church. I'm looking at some of these young ladies that what God has done in their life, some of them have gone from universities to, to all the great things, to marriage. Some of them, they came up in our children's ministry there. And I totally forgot about the story as they would come today and all be sitting there. This triple X theater, people would look at us going like, seriously, you met you at church in a triple X theater? I mean, we're, we're meeting in a Broadway theater, so don't get, uh, don't, don't get all pious on me just for a second. And here's what I, can I tell you what I love about Times Square Church? Is that we have church right across the street from Wicked. How great is that? <laughs> Wicked is there. The church is here. Only God could do that. 
I love it. I, I, and, and, and I mean, that just, it, it makes me happy. But this church in Detroit, there's triple X movies. It, when we were renovating the theater and getting it ready and not realizing that as I'm looking down at, at Regina and Felicia and Cynthia and Jeannie and thinking those four girls, we were renovating it for their lives. We were renovating it for them. And here's what's amazing. People would come to us all the time. The, the men that used to visit that theater thought we were renovating it for the pornography pictures. So they would come and go, hey, when do the movies start? And we would go Sundays, 10 and 6. You can come and see the movies. And people that used to go to that theater in bondage used to come. And we left the screen up, and now they're singing. They're seeing scriptures and singing songs off the screen that held them in bondage. Only God can do that. Only God. But that area was around, it was a hotbed of prostitution all over the area prostitution hotels all around us and these precious girls that would be caught in that kind of bondage we would want to do whatever we can to help them and to see God rescue them and we knew that we couldn't just share the gospel with them we needed to provide a place and our church had a home that they would come for a year and they would they would spend spend a year there that we would get them off the street to a safe house and pour our life into I have to give you a quick side note Six weeks ago, I was in Detroit because a pastor friend of mine got sick, had emergency surgery, and asked me to come in and speak. And I'm sitting on this side of the stage as I'm, get, as I'm getting ready to walk up to the Pope. And I look over, and four rows back, there's at the end, there was this like really excited lady just going. And so I was just thinking, okay, someone's got to stop. This is going to be really distracting for a while. And she's trying to get my attention, and I'm going like, this is just too. And then I look, and it was one of our graduates from the home. It was one of those prostitutes from the street that God rescued and changed her life. And I looked, and my heart was just so overjoyed that God rescued that young lady and did such a great work inside of her. And to see her church beaming with the love of Jesus, I remember when she and her son were brought in and just, it was just absolutely just, just a mess. Walked in with the scars and all, internally and outwardly, and yet God changed her life. But here's the part I have to tell you. Where that brought joy to me, the part that literally crushed my heart was we rescued one girl off the streets and brought her in and the, the house moms, the, the directors, these, the ladies said, Pastor Tim, they said, we have to tell you what happened with one of our gals. They said, we took her off the street. She was, she's been on the street. We don't know how long. And just the abuse, all that went on, that just covered it with, with dirt. It just, it was, it was so sad. So we gave her a towel. We gave her the soap. We put her in a bathroom. We said, I, I forgot what her name was. She said, go clean up, and then we want to come out. Let's, let's share a meal together. And I wanted just to... Just, just to pour into and love on her. Just to, just, to, just to let her know that you're cared for. You're safe now. And this is the part I'm telling you. I just think about to this day. They said when she came out, they said the sight was horrific. So when she walked out, her skin was bleeding. Because while she was trying to, while she was cleaning up, she was trying to scrub off the past on her. She was trying to wipe off all the dirt from her past from prostitution, and they said her legs and her arms, her face, her cheeks were all bleeding because, because of her scrubbing so hard to get, it, to get that stuff off. And folks, I have to tell you this today. She got it backwards. She doesn't clean herself up. It is Jesus that cleans us up. It's Christ that comes in. And some of you are sitting here and you're trying to go, I'm going to get good. I'm going to get better, Jesus. Once I stop this, I'm coming home. Once I've, Folks, you'll never do it. And that's why the good news is this. It, wh wh whatever you've done, whoever you are, there's only, you can only be cleansed one way, and that is by Jesus himself. And that can happen to you today, online in your living room or in person on 51st and Broadway. That's why I love the words of Brennan Manning. He says this, he said, God loves you unconditionally. N listen to this, as you are, not as you should be. 
because none of us is as they should be. So I love this part. So stop applying spiritual cosmetics to make yourself presentable to him. This has got coming to God, you come and going, this is who I am. I have nothing else to give to you but a messed up life. And God goes, perfect, let's have breakfast today. It's an invitation. But here's the challenge. It's not just to have a meal with Jesus. It's the share in the greatest meal that will ever be shared. And it's in heaven one day. The Bible calls it the marriage supper of the Lamb in Revelation 99. He says there is, a, there is a marriage supper that's going to take place where God, where we get to go to heaven and share in that. The Bible says that. Blessed are all those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. You know, you, you ever, in order to go to a wedding, folks, listen, the invitation is there, but you have to RSVP. You can't just show up. You know what the new thing is now? I just read about this. The new thing now that young couples are sending out is called the uninvited, um, the uninvited uh, um, announcements. So if you have friends, they go, listen, we're strapped for money, so we love you, but you're uninvited to our wedding. That's the new thing now. They said we can't afford to the place, so we can only have a few people, um, so we're strapped for our budget, so we love you, we'll see you after the wedding, but you're uninvited. Hey, good news today. No one gets uninvited to the party that Jesus is getting ready to throw and that marriage supper. That can happen to you. That can happen to any one of you. But you have to RSVP it. Because let's just be honest, folks. A hundred years from now, you're not going to be here. And you have the opportunity to RSVP and say, I'm going to be part of that. He's knocking. He's knocking. A hundred years from now. You won't be here. Some of you are going, to, no, I'm the egg white person. I'm healthy. I'm not, okay, you're not going to be here. Some of you are going like, but I use essential oils. Listen, let me just help you. They're not going to give you a long life. I mean, they, they, you may get, here, here's what's crazy. You ready for this? Just came out Friday. New Yorkers, I'm so sorry. They said New York, ABC News just said COVID has lessened the life expectancy for New Yorkers by 4.6 years. So you better RSVP pretty quick here. All of us have an invitation that can change our lives. It's been extended to you. God today can literally change you and me, and he can begin. You ready for this? Take the burdens and give us another chance. How did he do it with Peter? You know what he did for Peter? This is what he said. He said, you denied me in Jerusalem. So you know what I'm going to do, Peter? Here's your second chance. The church started in Acts chapter 2 and says, Peter, here's your second chance. You're going to preach the first sermon ever preached. In Acts. So in the city you denied me is now going to be the city you're going to proclaim me. You're going to do this, Peter. Only God can do that. So you know what I would have done? I would have gone like, let's just see if this really works. Let me see if you're really sorry. That's not the way God does it. God changes him from the inside out. Stand with me. I want to, I want to ask you the most important question you can never be asked today. There is an invitation. There's a wedding happening. And just before we get to the finale, I want to pray with you today. In the balcony, main floor, 51st and Broadway, and those that are watching around the world, around New York City and around the country. Here's the part that I want to challenge you with. It's the most important question anybody can ever ask you. Because you have to ask this. How do I get to that marriage? If it's in heaven, how do I get there? This is what Jesus said. Jesus' words. You ready for this? John 3.3. 3. No man can see the kingdom of heaven unless they are. What does it say? Here's what's crazy. If I was to go through that balcony and say, how do you get to heaven? I promise you, there'd be a hundred different ways to get there. But can I just help you balcony? I'm, not just, I'm just gonna pick on you for a second. Here's what's crazy, is that you would, you would give me your way on how to get there, but here's what's crazy. None of you have ever been there, but you're so sure on how to get there. And all of a sudden, everyone goes, no, this is how you get there. I was christened, or I'm religious, or I haven't hurt anybody. I take care of my family. I'm a nice person. I'm a good person. Thank God. Those, I've had one person go, I don't kill anybody. I said, good. Let's keep that going. Let's keep that up. No killing. But here's what's amazing. 
This is what I want you to understand. Those are all great things. That's not the directions. You've never been there. And if you have, let me just say this. I'm not going to believe your directions unless you came here, died, and rose again, and you've been to heaven. Then come talk to me. But until that point, it'd be as foolish as me to go to our keyboardist, Duran, our music director, and go, Duran, I'm going to tell you how to get to your house. Duran would look at me and go, you've never been to my house. Yeah, 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 but I'm going to tell you the best directions. He'd look at me going like, you're out of your mind. So all of a sudden, but you're smart enough to know how to get to heaven. Jesus, who came from heaven to earth, who died on the cross, resurrected, and went back to heaven, said, the way to my house is you've got to be born again. Pastor Tim, what does that mean? Here it comes. You ready for this? Just as you had a first birth physically and have a birth date, you need a second birth spiritually. Many of you were born in a hospital on your first birth, but now it's time to be born spiritually today. How does that happen, Pastor Tim? It's as simple as ABC. Here it comes. A, it's admitting that I'm a sinner. All of us. We were born broken. We all have a condition and it's called sin. You can't fix it with a prescription, a program, promises. Peter couldn't promise anything. And everyone tries to fix it themselves. You can't scrub it off you. There's only one way to fix it, and that's Jesus coming and fixing it for us. And that's the B word, believing that God sent his son 2,000 years ago that we celebrated on Friday to become my sin bearer. He would die the death that I was supposed to die, live the life I couldn't live, and give me a reward I didn't even deserve. And said, listen, that's where I've come, and you have to believe in me. And then finally, C, confessing him as Lord, saying, you're in charge of my life now. See, that's the difference between a religion and a relationship. A religion says, show up at your religious building once a week for a couple hours. Let me just help you. Jesus didn't die and raise from the dead to get you to church. Jesus died and rose again to get you to heaven forever. That's what he has come to do. So let's put, a, let's put aside. Let's have enough of humility. The knock is coming. Because some of you thought you could get to heaven by being good. Some of you thought you can get to heaven by showing up here. Let me help you. You can't get to heaven because you went to the synagogue, you went to the mosque, you went to the cathedral, and let me just help you. You don't go to heaven because you come to Times Square Church. You can only get there by being born again, and that can happen. How, what does it mean? You can RSVP right now. It's the most important question. So here it is. I want you to close your eyes and bow your head for just one moment. I'm going to pray a born-again prayer. But you're going to have to RSVP. You're going to have to go, Pastor Tim, I want to be part. In about, in about one minute, I'm going to ask you, if you want to be part of that prayer, in one minute, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Just one minute. But if you're here today and you go, Pastor Tim, I want that. I'm RSVPing right now. Because I need to know that today, that I can have a changed life. That I can be born again. That I can be part of eternity and today I want that friendship I feel him knocking on my door so when you pray that prayer I want to start a journey with God today and some of you are going I don't know if I could do it because I'm not perfect exactly let me help you perfect people don't go to heaven forgiven people go to heaven you could be forgiven of your sins today and a brand new start happen right now and so in the next 15 seconds if you're here today with every head bowed, every eye closed, I'm going to be looking around, and I want to see those hands. If you're here today and say, Pastor Tim, when you pray that prayer, I'm not leaving this place without an RSVP. I'm saying, God, come in and change me from the inside out. This is going to be my second birth date today. On this Easter Sunday, I'm going to be born again. Let God do that work. Let him take scars and all, failures and all, denials and all, and let him change you. With every head bowed and every eye closed and say, Pastor Tim, when you pray that final prayer, would you just include me? If that's you and say, put me in that prayer without any hesitation. Hold up your hand as high as you can. Hold it up as high as you can. I want to see it because I want to make sure. Keep them up high. I want to make sure I see it. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Keep them up. Twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. 
41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, gotcha, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, and all the way back there, 75. Come on, can we thank God for what he has done right now? Hallelujah! Hey, let's all say this. Come on, pray. Pray this with me online, in person. Say this with me out loud. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe that on the cross you took my sin, my shame, and my guilt, and you died for it. You faced hell for me so I wouldn't have to go. You rose from the dead to give me a place in heaven, a purpose on earth, and a relationship with your Father. Today, Lord Jesus, I turn from my sin to be born again. Okay, say this part loud. Now, here it goes. God is my Father. Jesus is my Savior. The Holy Spirit is my helper. The Bible is my guide. And heaven is my home. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Hey, good news before, before, before we get to the finale. Let, let me just say this. It, it, to help you on your next step, if you're in person, text decided to 51,000. If you're watching online, click the link your host just put in there, and we're just going to help you with your next steps. That's all it is. But here's the good news today. You ready for this? Hell lost 75 people today. Or we like to sing it this way. Hell lost the number one. Come on. Come on, Times Square Church. Aren't you glad you came to the house of God this morning? If you know this, sing it with us. It says, wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul. And I tried with all my might. I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. A vagabond. Just when I
say? What an incredible day, an incredible week of harvest. Thank the Lord for all the souls that have been blessed, that have been touched. Would you give the Lord praise today for all that he's done this whole week? It's been a, a wonderful, incredible week of God just touching lives this Easter week. We're so excited. Folks, and thank God for uh, our creative team. Give it up for our creative team. Tyler, who's the director of our creative team here. <laughs> He's not going to come out, but Tyler and the whole creative team. Thank God for our music ministry. Thank God for Brother Ricardo, Brother Kareem, the choir, the band. Would you get up, give it up for our orchestra, the orchestra that came and helped us and supported us today. Praise God and the incredible testimonies today uh, and all that the Lord has done. But folks, we're so grateful for you. And none of this would be possible without you. And so we want to encourage you, if you know someone else who would be blessed, uh, they may not be able to come here for this production, but you can still send them the link. Send them the leak and let the Lord bless them. But we'll be back here on Tuesday at 7 o'clock for our midweek service. The Lord bless you. Happy Easter. Turn around and greet at least three people before you go. You're dismissed. Yeah.